Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another session of Adobe Live. Today we have our friend Megan Johnson with us, who is a branding and digital designer. Tell us a little bit more about you and what are we gonna work on today? Yes. Hi, everybody. It's good to see you guys again. Um, yes, I am a branding designer based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and love being on Adobe Live. Um, yeah, I spend a lot of times doing branding, web. Um, and a little bit of everything else. I'm sure designers can understand that. You never, your job is never limited to just one thing, you know? I always need help. I was calling yes. like, hey, I need branding advice because I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got you. But yeah, so I love being a branding designer. Shameless plug to my last Adobe Live in the top right corner. Um, it's just, it's fun and it really, you know, scratches the itch in your heart to be able to like work with a lot of people mm -hmm. oftentimes brands are really personal to people so i love getting to like you know create visuals for those things you yeah. know i feel more important than i should be and i love it but yes so my company that i own is all caps design shameless plug um you can find <laughs> us on instagram and on our website um working with a lot of brands right now which is so fun um that are going to be on the website soon so, all caps. Yeah. I like the name, you know, very Thank serious. You. All caps. You all know, caps. I was like, we're going to make this work. All caps. Yeah. We're going to position you well. All capital letters. All the things. Okay, yeah. so what we're talking about is mm -hmm. my favorite thing ever, Ted. We're talking about iconography. Iconography. It's my favorite. I've loved it since forever and um, <laughs> haven't always been good at it. But. Before we jump into that, what is iconography? Okay, yeah. Yes. So, um, I'm sure everybody everybody knows what icons are. You've definitely seen them. Mm -hmm. um, they're basically tiny visuals, um, tiny graphics that can. Um, what am I trying to think of the word? It's Why? like the apps design website. Mm -hmm. You have those like icon design, right? Like yes. Those, like uh, famous like the all the apps that we're used to, all the icons, right? So is yes. That, is that correct? Yes, yeah. 100. percent It's the tiny visuals that help get information across without having to be wordy. So nice. um, I think we all know that like if you look at a page full of words, mm -hmm. it's like really easy to get overwhelmed, and nobody wants to read just like a million words on a page. And so. Um, icons make things a little more accessible and easier mm. to read, and they're so cute. They're oh, little nice. and cute. So excited! So it's like when I get like a, a form of like bunch of words, it's sometimes really hard to tell what paragraphs talking about what. But if I see the icon, I was like, oh, so this part is about like your information, about right. your website, or about cameras or other skills you have. Yes, exactly. The breakdown. Yes, it kind of it kind of visually breaks up all the monotony, you know what I mean? Cool. So yes, so we're gonna design icons. Um, obviously, you don't have to, you know, some icons are used out of brands, but I'm a branding designer, so we're gonna talk, it, uh, talk about them in terms of a brand today. So I have this um, brand that I've made up. I wish this was a thing. I wish I owned a floral company in Atlanta, but I don't, <laughs> but that's okay. So this is a florist company that we're gonna design our icons for today. Um, and we're going to kind of dream about this catalog um, and kind of if this flower company had released um, like a flower care guide. Um, this is their table of contents right now and it's sad and it's just words and nobody wants to look <laughs> at it. And so we're going to make it a little bit better. So we're going to try to design some oh. icons to kind of fit in that. Nice. <laughs> that it's so funny because nice. like, that's how usually I would just type words and I was like, this looks good. And, yeah, like, yeah, and my yeah. friend was like, I was like do better. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, <laughs> okay, so I kind of wanted to jump into, I'm nerdy and have a science ish background, so I'm sorry if this doesn't interest you, but kind of like the science behind icons mm -hmm. um, and what we're going to base um, all of our designs off today. So um, there's something called visual balance that everybody, you are aware of it, even if you don't know what it's called. Um, it's basically the idea that um, if things, it doesn't matter if things are the same size, they need to look the same size. Mm. So I don't know if you, you know, true center, how something's like centered on a page, it doesn't actually look centered. It usually needs to be like a little bit higher or a yeah, little bit, know. you know? Yeah. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. And that's the same thing with icons. So like, if you can see here, we have like a square and a circle and they look, you know, similar in size, but when oh. you actually draw the lines, they're actually, the circle's actually bigger um, because those rounded edges actually kind of shrink um, shrink the shapes. So like I can show you kind of an example of if we made these the exact same size. Let's see. So it's better to have them exactly the same size. Well, it's better to have them 
not the exact same size. Not exact same size. Like this is them. Let me get the right colors here. So yeah, you're you so can, fast. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> magic. Oh, you're so nice. <laughs> So this is like uh, this is the circle and the square that are the same size, and you can see that the circle, or the square looks so much bigger, so much heavier is what you'd properly say, I guess. It does. Oh, yeah. Oh, so anyway, oh, fun little sweet. nerdy fact for you guys: visual oh. balance. Yeah. You visual like balance. I like that word. Yes, and it's in everything too. You know, like um, in any basis of like art composition or digital design composition or website design, they mm -hmm. all, you know, have visual balance in some way. In many a way. But anyway, a little nerdy, a little fun. No, no, it is. It's fact, bit. fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a million different icon sizes for good reason. The general, general rule of thumb in brands is if you design icons in a certain size, you don't necessarily manipulate them to be a different size. Mm -hmm. You would, like, redesign them in that size. Does that make sense? Mm. So, like, if you have a – obviously, if you have a line that's – no, sorry, hold on. If you have something um, that's stroked this size, mm -hmm. but then you blow it up. Oh my word, one second, you guys. It's all good. This is like really cool, it's like icon science. I like what Waze is, you know? Yeah, I hope this is interesting to some of you because I kind of like the like reasoning behind things, you know? I don't want to just oh, do it just to yeah. do it. It's, it's, it helps you. The more you understand it, the more it makes sense and then, like, helps you with the design down the road, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I feel like it gives us credibility, you know? Like, mm -hmm. we're not just throwing pretty things together. We're like, That's there's true, a little yeah. bit of a science to this, you know? Like, understand why it works and why it looks beautiful or why it doesn't work. Like, yeah. It's very important. It helps a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, so this is just kind of something to note, um, which is why you have, you know, you design in lots of different sizes. Um, you can do them any size. These are like common sizes that people use, I would say. Mm -hmm. So 24, 32, 36, all the way up to 256. Um, we are going to design icons today, spoiler alert, um, in 64 by 64 pixels. Nice. That's what we're going to do. But yeah, anyway, just a little bit of the science kind of behind what icons are and why. They exist. Yeah, it's they're very interesting. They're, ah, they're, they're ready for this. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Hopefully we can learn something. Um, I do not claim to know everything about Illustrator. I wish I did. But <laughs> so I'm also open to tips if anybody has, you know, things that they mm -hmm. want to tell me. They're like, Max, don't use the pen tool. Use other things. Okay. So like I said, we have this brand. Um, I am over in Adobe Express now. <laughs> and we're going to try to fix this this. Make it Index. more interesting. Make more it character. More, interesting. More, more character. More brand identity to it. Yes, for sure. I am a strong believer and mm -hmm. I am biased because of how I am. But <laughs> I am a strong believer that if you have a good consistent brand, you want everything to be consistent. That so is true. you want your icons to be, you know, match the vibe and you want, you know, everything to work together. That's what makes a good brand. It's kind of like you go into a store, you want to make sure like, although it has a lot of different elements in it, but it has a very strong yes. uh, identity. Right? Everything has like a main theme into it, right? Absolutely. So you don't feel like, whoa, how come this part looks so different? Like, yeah. It doesn't feel it's like coming from the same yeah. uh, company, right? Absolutely. I think a store is a good example. Yeah. Like if you go to Publix, you know how Publix is like branded? Yeah. Everything's mm -hmm. branded or grocery stores that have their like own brands. It's like very clear that they all you know, exist together. Anyways, all that to say, these are the prompts we're going to work for. So we're going to try to design some icons based off of these different prompts. So we have, this is flower based. This is about planting, cutting, growing flowers. So knowing your area, soil types, situation, selecting your flowers, flowers, obviously, water care, how much to water, sun exposure, and trimming your flowers. So we're going to try to design icons for those things. Icon. Yeah, the comment the chat says the the color palette is gorgeous. So uh -huh. can't wait to start. Let's Thank you. Oh, jump Publix. Into it. Yeah. Publix is not on the West Coast. That's funny. It's okay. People know it. I'm <laughs> sorry. I forget that. Yeah. Anyway, grocery stores. You get it. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Okay. So what's the what's our step? step okay. One first step. So step one is we're gonna just start designing our first icon. Mm -hmm. So knowing your area, I did have some ideas of what we could do for this. I'm open to other ideas. If anybody has any, I was kind of thinking we could lean into like, it's about soil types. So obviously maybe dirt. However, we don't want just an icon that is dirt. 
So I was thinking maybe <laughs> we could do icon with like a little leaf growing out of it. Maybe mm, yeah. I don't know. If anybody has any ideas. Yeah, if you guys have any ideas, suggestions, feel free to type in the chat. Well, Maggie does her magic. Thank you, oh, magic. You're so nice. Huh. But anyways, um, so yeah. So I think it's important. Like we have. A great tool with icon design is, of mm -hmm. course, basing things off of real life. There's a few mm -hmm. things. You want icons to be really recognizable so, you know, everybody can understand them um, and accessible, obviously, which is what we were talking about with the different sizes. So in this case, we're going to try to make it something that everybody knows. So you can get really creative, but you want to make sure that people know what you're talking about. Nice. Okay. So like I said, um, icons are also really good to create by building shapes upon shapes. Maybe not that large of a stroke though. Okay. Um, you wanna use very basic shapes and icons. You don't have to do this, mm -hmm. but um, because they're often really small, the more abstract you get with your shapes, the harder it is to recognize them. Yeah. Um, because your eyes are like, why are there just squiggly lines tiny? So I have this dream of maybe we will I'm also going to change the color. Oh, I have one quick question from yeah. the chat. Uh, could you show how the grids were designed and what made you design them this way? Yes. Okay. So that's a really good question. You don't have to use anything like this. Um, I made these somewhat arbitrarily. You can also find these online. Like if you Google just icon templates, icon template. a million designers create them and like mm. you can get them for free. So um, yeah, basically, ugh, thank you for saying that. This is actually so important. Okay. So what's important to know, I was talking about that visual balance. This is kind of the basis of that. If certain shapes are obviously, you know, shaped differently than others. Certain objects are shaped differently than others. So like a flower is kind of like tall and skinny. Yes. Whereas like if I was doing, I don't know, a pile of dirt like we're about to do, it's going to be wider. Yep. Um, but you don't want an icon that's this big and then an icon that's like this big because that's crazy. So this helps kind of guide you in designing with the different shapes. Like a guideline that you won't design over broad, right? Like a, yes. Like a bleach design. Like yes. a safe safe area. Yes, exactly. Like a safe area. Exactly. It's like your it's like your um, bumper bumpers. Yeah, it's on making your sure icons. like everything's balanced in this size so it yes. looks great when you like export it later. Yes. Obviously so the dream would be to have an icon that fits this entire square right here. Um that would be the dream is to have that, you know, all of your icons be that perfect mm -hmm. shape. But that's just not how life works, and that's okay. So if you can see here, these are broken up into lots of shapes that are visually balanced within the square. So, like, this is the tallest and skinniest. Let me raise this um, line weight. So this is the tallest and skinniest, mm -hmm. but this is, you know, obviously shorter and wider. wider but they're mm -hmm. still within kind of the constraints of that square that we created. Um and you can do it, you know, however you want to do it. This will change based on the kinds of icons you're designing to. The goal is to keep your icons in this square right here, this blue square that I'm making blue. Um, and then the orange are your bumpers, mm. so that your bumpers are already set up. So, for example, if I had an icon and then I had text that said, Ted. Hello. This is going to be your <laughs> icon. You would come and put this against what would be the edge of that file, oh. that the icon, but that wouldn't be there, obviously. So everything is perfectly spaced, essentially. It's kind of like the dream, obviously. Um, and it's not so much, it's not technically that easy. Obviously, you'd create, like, you wouldn't put text, like, that close to your icons, but that's kind of the basis of it. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question for the most part? But, yeah, it's, it's basically just, like, keeping... Everything so visually everything balanced. has to be in that blue square of your design. Yes. And then the outer layer of orange is the space that you keep between your funds or other things distance. So it's yes. like a safe distance on it. Yes. And you have the skinny version or the wider version on in the circle. Yes. So like everything's designed to balance. So um, if they want to go find this template, right? They yes. can just type um, icon template, design template. They will find something like this and they can also design one for themselves, right? Yes, absolutely. You can design one for yourself if you want, and you can create your own constraints. Um, 
it's obviously based off like your pixels and you just have to kind of play yeah. with it. I can't think of exactly how many pixels this is. I think it's yeah. like four pixels separated in between each one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because it's like personal choice. And yes. Then design. Yeah. So I think that we can go on like with see how you do your do it your way. Yes. And it'll help us to understand like, oh, why you did it that way. Yes. Okay. For sure. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna design some icons, and I'll kind of show you how that is in an ac in action, what that looks like in action. Um, so obviously, we're trying to design to that outermost square, but we are, you know, sometimes a little more limited in that. You don't want to; it's so you don't have to force a tall, skinny flower to be a square, you know, mm -hmm. because just not everything fits like that. Okay, so for the dirt, I'm thinking obviously we're gonna try to use um, different basic shapes to create these. So I started with just a circle and we can always adjust. Um, and I'm going to scale this down by about 30%. And then I might scale it down one more time. I'm just using right click transform scale mm -hmm. to do this. That's probably about good. I'm gonna make these all the same width just so it helps my brain a little bit, but. Um, so we are kind of basing our design off this little dirt pile. It's funny, I'm making you guys stare at dirt, but <laughs> it's for a point, I promise. Um, I just locked us in place with Command-2. Fun fact, Command-2 Command two. helps lock things into place. Okay, so we're basically just going to kind of create this. We're going to exaggerate any small shape, essentially. Mm -hmm. So a dirt pile, it's, you know... It looks like a V, which you could do, I guess. You could make an icon that literally just looks like, like that. that. Yeah. But we're going to kind of make it a little more cute because it's like flowers and happy. Mm. And so I'm going to use these circles and create um, dirt from these basic shapes. I'm just going to bring these over here. Oh, I see where you're going with see it. See where I'm going with this a little bit? We're going to create, like, I might need to move this over a little bit. And we're going to eventually merge all of these and make them look like they belong together. Okay, I might actually scale this one down just a little bit more. How do you do the duplicate? Just like Control C and copy and paste? Or? Oh yeah, good question. Um, I if you option click and option drag something, well if I can get it, an option drag something, oh, it'll just automatically. That's cool. The day I learned that is the day my life got easier. Well, it was wonderful. That's today for me. It, <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I hope I can make your life. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's a game changer because it saves nice. a million. You don't have to Command C, Command B all the time. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to just, um, I'm going to drag these down mm -hmm. and copy and paste these. So we, if we want to edit this, we can without it being destructive. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to come over here to the Pathfinder tool. There's a lot of ways to do this. Um, I learned the Pathfinder tool, so I think it's, it's kind of like the thing you were talking about earlier with, um, selective color, like you just learn it and then you kind of stick to it, you know. Um, so I tend to use Pathfinder. You can also use Shape Builder tool, which is where you select all of them, do Shift M, or it's this little guy over here, and it allows you to select and separate shapes. So like I just Shape Finder that tool right there and it kind of split it up. Um, this can be, Shape Finder tool is very accurate, so that's good and can be really helpful um, if you're trying to design really accurate icons, which we of course will always try to do. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna use Pathfinder because it's a little quicker, a little fun, a little easier. So I'm just gonna combine all these shapes with the Pathfinder tool and I'm going to delete this under layer essentially. Just like that. Wow. We're going to connect it with the pen tool. And we already have something that's starting to look a little dirt-like, I think. It does. It give you a strong grand yeah. shape right there. Yeah, a little bit. So it's um, we're going to roll with that for right now. We can always come and fix it. Actually, I'm going to fix it a little bit. It's a little crazy. I don't like how arched this feels. It feels a little too cartoony for me, I think. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to smooth it out just a little bit. I think this is the problem child. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste them again, bring them down here, Pathfinder tool, select them all together, and then direct select those points. Connect them at the bottom. Um, I 
find icons so fun. I definitely like that better. I don't know if you can tell if that's just me being obnoxious, but it just feels like this it's feels a little smooth. It feels now a little it's like smoother. super sharp turn right there, right there. Yeah. The problem children that you yes. identify right there, it does fix it. <laughs> the problem child. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this over just to kind of show you guys the process, like the shapes that we built up from it. And we'll kind of build off of this side too. Might be good to kind of see both sides of the process. Do you provide the template somewhere on your website? Or? I don't, but I should. If mm, you guys give me, link, yeah. I know, <laughs> give me 24 hours, it'll be on All Caps' website. Um, I'm trying to think of one I downloaded years and years and years ago. Uh, and I can't think of it, but yeah, put this follow me on, on Instagram. Website. I'll yeah. post it. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, mm -hmm. and we want to create a um, little leaf, little leaf guy. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here with just an oval. I'm going to do Shift-C, which I don't remember the name of this tool, Anchor Point Tool. Anchor and this point. turns points into harsher points rather than curved points. I actually want this to come in a little bit. I have a vision. Stay with me. Stay with me. And um, I have drawn this so many times, which is why I'm kind of just winging this part of it. Um, little leaves and things. I feel like, you know, it's ingrained in my brain. Mm -hmm. But I kind of have a, I have a dream. Let's see. <laughs> if we bring it here... Icons are also just like so, look at it, play with it, and you're like, mm, that just doesn't work. Yeah, and I think fix it's, like, it. uh, it's very similar for me, because uh, I, I never designed icon before, right? But for me, it's like a very similar, like when I create stuff on Photoshop, it's like yeah. whatever have the strongest silhouette that your brain automatically understand what it is, works the best. Yes. Right, so the same, uh, I'm assuming the same with the icon. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Recog recognize, recognition is good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see the two leaves. Oh, two little leaves. You see together. where we're going with yeah. this? Yeah. Wow. Anyways. So fast. This will take me like five hours. Oh, just no, like, you could do it. How I do swear. I do, this? <laughs> I do think after some point in time, the pen tool is part of my hands at some point because I use it every day of my life. Oh, what did you do this? there that duplicate the line straight up? Is it the same way? Or? Oh, yeah. So I, what I did is I just came in here mm -hmm. and hello. And I used the direct select tool and I selected this tiny little point here and moved it up and down. That's all oh, I did. nice. Very simple. Yes. Okay. So we're going to come in here, center our icons, and then I'm going to connect these to this. And we're obviously going to have to adjust. So already you can see that's starting to look like something, wow. you know? It's, it's definitely the stroke's going to have to come up a little bit. She's so cute, though. <laughs> So, a couple different thoughts I have. Yes. Um, I don't. I think the leaves and the ground are looking a little disproportional. <laughs> so mm. I think we're going to shrink this down a little bit, which is okay. And we're going to make our dirt more of the main focus since this is about soil. Oh, I don't know. I didn't even think about that. I don't know. Just thoughts from all caps. But okay, we're going to bring this up a little bit and. What we're going to do is actually just create a square, a rectangle. That's not a square, a rectangle, and see what this does for us. So already I think it's like, obviously it's very, you know, geometric, but I think that's okay because icons, you know, at least it'll be recognizable and that's what we want. So we'll start there and see kind of, if, if it looks good with the rest of our icons. Selected points cannot be joined as they're invalid. Oh, no, they're not. Friends just say, oh, now I'm really appreciating the orange framework. Oh? It's <laughs> so a very, very key Thank important you? role right there. Yeah. Yes, I know. Sorry, I should have said that at the first time. Like, I didn't just make that up, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, look how cute. See, it already is starting to look like yeah. an the icon. Thing, the, the rectangle you just add make me re remind me of, like the the bottom of like the garden outside the frame. Yeah, right. The dirt like there's a, the frame. Maybe yeah. that's why I did. Maybe that was my subconscious being like I needed it's like a little. So yes, yeah, so and my brain triggers. Is, oh yeah, I understand what that is. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of leave him where he is, and 
we're gonna come to flowers. Um, okay. We'll design as many of these as we can. We might not be able to do all of them, but it's okay. I may or may not have backup icons if all else fails. You got these. Okay. I'm saving you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so a couple thoughts. Mm -hmm. I think we want to do a flower. We want to do like as basic of a flower as you can get. Right. So I'm thinking like the flowers that you draw when you're little, like when, you know, like you just look at a little yeah. circle and a little, you know, except obviously maybe a little more professional looking. Um, so I'm thinking of kind of three parts of this. Obviously we have leaves, we have a stem, and we have the main part of the flower. And so I think we'll kind of lean into that a little bit. For the main part of the flower, we're gonna make it super understandable. So I just duplicated this. Mm -hmm. I'm copying it and I'm rotating it 45 degrees. And I'm gonna do that again. No, that's not what I said. When you, when you say that, like draw the flower, like how everyone used to draw. I was like, is that like a universal language that everybody just draw flowers, house, grass, and sun yeah. at the corner? Of the yeah, like, literally. Nobody taught us to draw it like that. We are just like, oh yeah, that's exactly how it's gonna look like. No, yeah, that's exactly what, I mean, you know, everybody know everybody yeah. thinks of it. Well, so I think if you need design help, just go talk to little kids because they've got it right because- They got a lot of great ideas. They got a lot of great ideas. Have you seen that blog and it's like, um, kids should name everything in the world? Oh, because no, kids come up with such creative they names. Do. I love it. I love that little blog. Oh, look at the flower. Okay, so obviously we're we're getting on to something, you know. I think this definitely needs to be wider now that I'm looking at it. Oh, can I ask what about radio repeat? You can do radio repeat. Because of the way I'm doing this, I'm converting them all into shapes. I don't want all of the lines. I have to play with it a little too much to do radial repeat, in my I opinion. See. But you can definitely use it. Um, it's it's a great way to do it. You can. It's a personal preference on the it's design. It's a personal styles. preference. Yeah. It's me being angsty, but you can come here, go to. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is it? Repeat and radial, and it'll do just that for you. So I that's, see, it's the, I can tell the difference when you put them like yes. next to each other, yeah. Yes, and it, you can do this, which is really helpful. Look how fun. <laughs> but anyway, um, and it's just it's just a personal preference because I might end up, I'm not, it might not end up super uniform mm -hmm. in the end, right. which is why I tend to. Full control. Yeah. yeah, I'm a control freak, I guess. I didn't know, but. <laughs> everybody's Everybody's design, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> just be this phi angle tilted right there. Yes. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> different, yeah. We all have a little bit of a problem, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna try this. Mm -hmm. Transform, rotate 90 degrees. Select all of these, transform, rotate 45 degrees. That's more what I was going after. I don't know if y'all can see the difference, but it's kind of what I was envisioning. Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. We're gonna select all of these and we're gonna make these, you know, Pathfinder tool. Delete the center. And now we need to add a center in our flower. We could have kept that one, I guess, but I didn't like how spiky it looked. So mm -hmm. It felt a little crazy. It's very different. I think it's really, really important with icons to kind of step back from what you're doing because mm -hmm. you have to imagine these will probably be like this size on a page. I know you guys can't really, you know, totally see that, but um, they need to be readable from far away or else they're not doing their job and that's not good. So yeah, we're gonna come in here, center this, I think, like I said, it's always good to keep things consistent. So we're gonna steal this same shape that we used over here with the leaves in this flower. And I'm actually just going to legitimately steal it. Hold on. Like this. No. Ungroup. I grouped this so many times. <laughs> it happens. Ugh, the struggle is real. Okay, fine. We'll just do it the hard way. Okay, so I'm going to steal this. Transform. Ungroup. Okay, we're going to create our stem. We're going to steal. I mean, do we still have the dirt? I deleted the dirt. I think the dirt might be a lot for uh, okay. this. I see, I see. 
Oh my gosh, you guys. I deleted our icon. Hold on. <laughs> is that way, what you were saying? Yeah, as I way, the original icon. You're so you're like, Maggie, you're ruining it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I I just that. like to have a copy of everything. No, I do like, too. A I, copy of the copy That too. would have been a terrible mistake. I just love copies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. A copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah. Literally. <clears throat> okay. So like I said, we are gonna try to work within the constraints of our grid that we've created for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put our leaves at the bottom. We're working on this rectangle, the tall skinny, mm. because I don't feel like, I feel like a flower well, flower is, is yeah. tall, right? Yeah, it's it tends healthy, to be taller. You know? Yes, all yeah. of the above. So we're just gonna come in here and start doing some adjusting of. Oh, it's looking so cute. Kind of cute, kind of fun in the bottom okay and then in just a second once we get this one designed we're actually going to jump back into adobe express and kind of um, i'll show you a little cheat code i have that makes this also a lot easier all right so we come here we're going to steal that <laughs> transform reflect okay the leaves might be a little too big still. I don't know. What do you think? Should we make our leaves smaller? Are they distracting? Should we make our flower just a little bit bigger, maybe? Yeah, maybe make the leaves a little bit slow, uh, smaller. Not slower, Le slower. Slower. A little slower. <laughs> also might be good. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, yeah, make the leaves a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. So we definitely want to keep um, our constraints in obviously the template that we created. Oh yeah, because it is gonna be a small icon yes. that we're looking for. It's like something you wanna recognize right away. Yes. But what we're gonna do is mm -hmm. shrink the width of them. This is kind of like a play into that visual balance thing that I was mentioning earlier. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just going to shrink our leaves a little bit. Oh. So it's the same shape that we're like carrying over, but it the leaves are a little less distracting. I don't think bringing this all the way up is the move. That feels like a little too yeah, much too, to too me, big, yeah. which is kind of why. I mean, you guys let me know. I mean, I like I'm, it. One I like the dark opinion. Opinion. Yeah, yeah. I like like you skinny like so you give it like a completely different feel. It feels smaller, but not. It's still the same right thickness of the line, right? Right. Yeah. And it still touched the design template, so everything looked good. Yes, and we're mm. still in our rules. And so it's all the things. So I think already these are starting to look really good, you know, together. And we Yay. can kind of, oh, they're not the same line weight, though. Let's see. So we can play, this is what I was going to say. We can kind of play yeah. with the line weights here. Something I love. This is my comment to the developers of Adobe. This is the best thing they've ever done. Is you can actually directly copy and paste into Adobe Express. Oh, what? I didn't know that. Yes. So we have our little icon already there. Look at her. Yeah. Quick question. Uh, yeah. Susan asked, like, what if you make it smaller leaves, well, which we did, and maybe not the same size? Would it would it oh. break the template, like the design rule you have for you? Or? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, if, Is it better to keep it similar size? So I think, honestly, it depends on the brand that you're working on. It, it's gotcha. a little more quirky to have Mm. like leaves that are a different size, which could be fun. I think in this case, because I am trying to keep things super constrained, one yeah. thing you could do is bring one further up maybe. It could be kind of tasteful to have it touch that and then this one come up a little bit. Oh, I see. Yeah. More like that. Like that's kind of festive. I do think, I mean, I don't know. Oh, it's your design, right? Yeah. So we're just but if you guys think that looks better, <laughs> I'm here for it. Obviously, it's good to get user research. But, um, yeah, you can kind of play with it however you want. If that might be a good thing, just for sake of what we're doing, let me just let's let's look at that what that could look like actually. That definitely that's a good point. Who said that? Suzanne is that what yeah. you said? Or Susan? Um, that would definitely add more like visual interest, which would be good. Let me show you kind of like a way around that. You could make our flower icon bigger, obviously, to fit the constraints, like what we were talking about. So like roughly about there. And then come in here with the different size leaves. 
and that could be a cute way of doing it. So you're still within your constraints that you've given yourself. Oh, I see. But it's just like a different way to do it. Like I said, I feel like it's a little I like, I like flower the, heavy. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. But you know what I mean? And that does yeah. create visual interest. I like, I like how, doesn't matter like how you change the size and proportion, you're still following the template, Yeah. the guideline that you set for your design. So it's, it's yeah. really cool. Well, it's also kind of fun because there's a million different styles, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, oh, somebody say whimsical versus symmetrical. That's oh, a good way to say that. Yeah. You know, like a little more concrete versus whimsy, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, and I think this is when you could play with, if you wanted to do icons that were a little more stylized color-wise, you could do, mm -hmm. this is when you could switch things around like that too. There's a oh, million so things cool. you can yeah. do, you know? So it'll d depend on the designer and how your clients want it, right? Yes, yeah. for sure, for sure. My client this time is very agreeable because nice. she we're made we made her up, but still. <laughs> no, she's real. She's real. <laughs> I, I imagine it, but yeah, I, I like how you can just do Control C and Control yes. V to paste it directly onto Express. Yes, that is really cool. If so, this is a good this is a good thing to mention. If you were designing icons that were going to be used all the time, mm -hmm. you would want to add them into libraries, which is which we'll get into in just a second. Oh, okay. um, I'll show you how to use libraries. But if you just want to do quick tests like this, or you have, like, let's say this brand will never ever use this icon again, mm -hmm. you can just do like a quick copy and paste in it. You don't have to go through all the like the libraries or the exporting or like make it a part of your brand, mm -hmm. um, which is just kind of a helpful thing. I like that Adobe Express does that. That is so cool. Yes. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, I like the way this is looking. Let me know, let me know what you guys think. I think it looks really good. <laughs> I think they're looking, starting to look yeah. kind of cute. I'm wondering if the line weight might be a little too thick. So maybe we take it down just a little bit and see what it looks like. And then you guys let me know if we think we should do the thicker ones or the thinner ones. Personally, I prefer the thicker ones. It's easier yeah. to see, you know. I think you might be right. Yeah, but maybe maybe if you're adding more colors, maybe the thinner line works better. Yeah. Because it's more color heavy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think the thicker ones are definitely matching more with this brand than these. Mm -hmm. Match the fonts. For Match me, it's very font. easy to see and understand. Yeah. 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 I feel like these, yeah, I feel like these icons are a nice little tribute to the sans serif fonts we have going on here, but... Okay, cool. So for water, <laughs> sorry, Francis said is when our imaginary clients give us a hard time that we might want to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just we need to take thicker. a break. Yeah, <laughs> so they say thicker. Yeah, they say thicker. Thicker looks great. Thicker, yeah. awesome. We're doing it. Back to two points, two point strokes. Amazing. Okay, so like I said, mm -hmm. um, we are gonna try and do a few more of these. The rest of these don't will not take very long, so I think we can do this, all of them, in the right time. Okay, water, super easy, I think, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an oval, and we're gonna make a little water droplet. Oh, maybe, maybe, I don't select know. Select the anchor point, lower it, that's, that's a universal water Universal icon. water, <laughs> if you look at that, you're like, for, well, hopefully one of your first, you know, impressions is that it would be water. Another way to do this is to do it with the shape finder tool mm -hmm. and um, come in with the polygon tool, do three points to create a triangle, a massive triangle. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> we're going to come back into our template. So yeah, I just, I just think icons are very tedious for sure, but I just feel feel like they're so rewarding because they're like accessible and then also you can create literally anything. It's also a little bit of like a puzzle to me, I think, because mm. you have to figure out like what are the basic, the most basic shapes to create these icons that people will understand. It's like minimalism at its finest. So I'm basically just gonna make this tangent to this line by keeping the constraints. <laughs> and then we're gonna do Pathfinder, combine them, and then we will have to we would have to correct all of those. Then, yeah. So it's kind of interesting. It gives you two very different shapes actually. I think this might be the better option for us. 
because um, it's a little more geometric. Shape. <laughs> it's a little more, more shape. shape. It's more <laughs> shape. Thank you. I was really losing my words there yeah. for a second. So you guys can tell I have a limited vocabulary, but oh, it's more shape. <laughs> sorry, you guys. It's design all day. Uh, <laughs> greater to find silhouette. Yeah. Greater silhouette. Yes. Yeah. I'll probably go with the first one because I'm lazy. Like, oh, this will do. <laughs> this will work. Yeah. But smarter way. Smarter way. Smarter, smarter way. Work smarter, smart, work smarter. There's no wrong answer. Oh, yeah. They both look good. What you, which guys? Which one do you guys like yeah. more? The yeah. left one or the right one? Yeah, which one do you think fits better? I mm. do kind of feel like the more geometric. These were very geometric. But honestly, our soil is not the most yeah. geometric. So no. I think either would work. Okay, so something I'm noticing, um, it's good to look at these all together. I think just that looks looks good yeah it looks good i think it might be a little bit boring mm. comparatively like it's almost too simple so we could do this one of two ways we can scoot this guy over bring it over here and whoa we can erase this line or maybe we just play with scale just a little bit that's cool i, I like don't that. know maybe ba, ba, ba. okay then we're gonna come draw a couple points, and yeah, Joseph and Janelle said right one, which is the one you're working on. This one, I like, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, this I is like, better. I like erasing that line. Just give it like volume. A little bit more, more interest, layers. yeah. More anyway, water. <laughs> more water. And then I think this might need one more thing, and I think it might just be a little water shine mark. So I Ooh. promise it's not going to stay looking like a pin on Google Maps, but oh, <laughs> I didn't even think like, about it. Don't you think, you think it kind of looks like that? Yeah, it might look upside down, you know. Maybe a little. <laughs> All right, we're going to delete these two points and just give it a little bit of a. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe a little. Can rotate it a little bit. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Closer to the edge. Oh, could it be closer to the edge? Closer, closer, like over here. Uh, Maybe we, <laughs> no, I think you're right. I think we need to make this bigger. Get rid of, what does it look like down there? Maybe that's what we need to do. I do think that's a little bit better. Yeah. Sure <laughs> so is it avocado? <laughs> avocado, I know, with the, oh yeah, it does, with, with the, the circle. Oh yeah. It does look like an avocado. Oh, UI is in my brain, I'm like. This looks good, yeah, it looks like the water. Maybe a highlights. little. Yeah. Something okay. Um, my favorite tool in Illustrator. This is yes. dramatic. It's not my favorite, but one thing I love is if you go to the stroke panel, mm -hmm. which is the one that looks like three little lines over here on the right. There's all different things you can do with strokes. So if I select this water, you know, droplet, mm -hmm. um, you can change where the line falls. Uh. So there's a line that the computer is recognizing, and you can change it to have it on the line, outside the line, or inside the line. And sometimes, based on your different needs, you need different things. Mm. I usually, for the most part, keep it inside, or like on centered. But another thing you can do is you can add caps to your strokes. So at one point, as a little wee designer, I was drawing lines mm -hmm. and was hand drawing circles and oh. like merging them. Jeez. Yeah, no, I don't, she was crazy. She was lost, but it's it okay. Works. yeah. Oh, we have about 12 minutes left. Okay, Ish? awesome. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and jump into Adobe Express. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys, you know, how these are all kind of coming together. Um, so two ways of getting these into Adobe Express. You can directly copy them, like I was mentioning, or you can select them and drag them in to what's called libraries. Um, you can create... Libraries are great for branding designers because there's so many different elements and assets that go with different brands. You have your main logos and your secondary logos and mm -hmm. sometimes other logos and um, icons and all of these little things, color blocks that you want to be able to translate into all different um, softwares. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to take these and... Um, Why isn't my head blocking it? Do what? <laughs> library. Do what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Library. Library right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's so fun. I can move it up. <laughs> yeah. And then my head was blocking it. Oh, there, there we go. go. Okay, there libraries. Go. <laughs> so as you can see, I already have the uh, like other brand elements for this brand in here. I have the main logos in here and so on. Ooh, it's I know. a whole Isn't color palette so and everything. Fun? I, know. I thought you color palette nerds like I am <laughs> would appreciate that. Um, also, you most of the time don't do all of your logos and all of your colors, but I wanted to this time just for the fun of it. So I did it. <laughs> 
Wow. Okay, so what you can do, I've already created a group for here um, mm -hmm. for the library, and you can just drag them into the libraries, and they will show up there. Oh. So then when I go to Adobe Express, it'll show up. <gasps> They're right instantly like shut up right there. And then wow. I can bring them in. Is it not just the best thing you've ever seen? That is amazing. Just me. So I, okay, because I did that, that is the actually water looks showing. Really good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I little, like it. Little water yeah. droplets. Do you think it translates that it looks like water? I, it works for me. It works yeah, for us. I think works it works for what we're doing. Um. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and recolor our icons, and then we are going mm -hmm. to bring them into Illustrator or into our library and into Adobe Express to use them. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something really cool. And that is called generative recolor. And I don't know if you know about generative recolor, but it's brilliant and wonderful and you need it in your life. I'm gonna come, I may or may not have other icons to steal for us down here so we don't have to design them. <laughs> Pre-made. <laughs> Pre-made. Pre-made. Just in case you run out of time. But I think you guys kind of get the basis of, you know, how you can design icons and what you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to show you what we got. We've got our soil, knowing your area, flowers, water droplets, sunshine, and trimming. Little scissors, you know what I mean? Um, we could iterate on these all day, you know. There's not usually a right answer. And obviously your clients will have opinions and might have a different um, opinion on that. So anyway. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and make these icons really fun, random colors that are kind of similar to our color palette. So as you guys can see, we have our little brand down here. Don't freeze, don't freeze. We have our brand down here that has this really bold green um, that's dark, kind of modern, kind of moody. Mm -hmm. And then these pinks that I'm working with. So I feel like it could be really fun to make these icons, bring some pinks into these icons because it's kind of a little flirty color in this brand, I would say. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I just filled random um, blocks with different colors because of uh, with different shades that I'm after. This is essentially telling generative color that I want not just like one value of colors, I want like lots of different colors. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go to edit colors, edit colors and generative recolor and then we can give it a prompt that will recolor it so we can use those colors in our brand. So I'm thinking pinks. I'm trying to think of something that's like largely pink. Um, we could do like Valentine's Day. Like yeah, sure. Day. Just pass and we can use that. Valentine's Day and see kind of what pops up. So then it will give us color palettes that are based off of these Valentine's Day colors. Okay, so fun. Oh, wow. Just create like a whole palette for you. A whole palette. I kind of like where this is going. Whoa. It's, uh, yeah, so I just selected it and it automatically did it. I don't know if that's totally on the mark though. So I'm gonna generate it again and kind of see what it says. I have about five minutes. Okay, awesome. You got it. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. And then I feel like this actually really matches with kind of what we were going for. Mm -hmm. So then I'm gonna start recoloring these. Um, I'm going to outline these strokes, object, path, outline, stroke. And I'm going to recolor these with our icons that we've oh, created. Okay. So you're selecting the, the path stroke. Yes. And then change the color to match the one we just generated. Yes. So anyway, it's it's kind of fun. It's, it's a good way. Like, color palettes are hard. Finding and creating really good color palettes wow. can be really hard to do. Um, obviously, if you have strict brand colors, you wouldn't do this. You would just use the brand colors that you've created for yourself. But <laughs> for the sake of time, I am going to go ahead and just copy and paste these in there. <laughs> but overall, I just kind of wanted, wanted you guys to see kind of the possibilities that you can create with icons, what you can do with them, um, how there is a little bit of a backbone to them that you know, it's not just random. There's a little bit of a science to it, which is kind of nice. It gives you rules, so it feels a little more achievable, I think. And yeah, there's a lot of like design elements, rules, and yes. science, and why it works, right? Like all the hidden gems. Yes. You, you wanted to break it down and show everyone to say, hey, this is why I do this. You know? Yes. 
Anyway, so I just love it. Obviously, we would spend a lot more time, you Mm -hmm. know, really focusing on how to create that perfect, beautiful index. But overall, it's starting to kind of come together, I think. I'm going to align these. Yeah. Colors are a little wacky. I think I would maybe play with the colors a little Mm -hmm. bit more. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how our icons turned out. I think they look like they all belong together. They look like they're in the same family, at least. And... So what happens if you use a color that is not from the same family or palette? Does it, like, can, can the other designer tell right away? Because I'm not good with color theory. Yeah. So like, you can tell, is that, oh, something's off? Like in a brand palette? Yeah. So it's kind of funny. I think it's how recognizable the brand is. So, like, this mm. brand, obviously, nobody knows. And um, nobody, you know, knows my little Atlanta florist brand. But... If it was a really recognizable brand, like let's say like Coca-Cola, like obviously they have really bright reds. So if you started seeing funky blues in their ads, you would be like, that doesn't make oh, any yeah. sense, you know? Yeah. Whoa, hold on, wait a minute, something's not right. Yeah, there are a lot of really great tools out there like Generative Recolor that I have been leaning on um, in terms of color palettes because it's it can just be so hard to pick colors that will work in all different scenarios. Um, but yeah, oh, kind of fun. Cute. So already you can tell that like our index, it's a lot more readable. You know, you play around with the size of these um, to figure out really what would work best with this brand and so on. Um, but yeah, kind of yeah. fun. It's kind of all coming Good together. Job. I think it looks wonderful. Icons can fix all of your design problems. I'm convinced. It, <laughs> <laughs> it makes your brand so much more interesting. I think also if you do custom iconography or if brands have a designer create custom iconography for them, it really can like make or break um, a brand. Um, it just doesn't look so stocky, I think. Um, all of that to say, there's a lot of really cool resources to find icons if you don't have time to design your own. It does take a lot of time, as you can see. Um, there's one place called The Noun Project, which is um, a desi- designers over the years have added a lot of icons onto this website called The Noun Project. And it's a good reference for icons and icon inspo. I look at it a lot. Awesome. Um, just don't claim that your icons are custom if yeah, using you a reference or, reference or yeah. you use them. But you, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's what I've got for you guys. I could spend a whole, you know. We can go all day. Long we could go going with all that. day <laughs> talking about, you know. Yes. Thank you so Girl much Robert for sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, we, we went from like you. starting with like, you know, just the words, going to uh, use your template to design an icon and then follow the rules and why we do that. And then de- design all the little tiny icons. But like, even though like they're different, but they like they fit and look the same because they follow yes. the template that you show us. And then to the generated color, right? Yes. With that, And then now we can copy and paste or just Putting the library directly to Adobe Express is amazing. Yes. Hey, yeah. So uh, tell us where can we find you or where should we go hire you for work and stuff? Yes, <laughs> please come hire me yeah. for work. I would love to or work with you guys. Um, so you can follow me on uh, at all caps design on Instagram. It's all caps dot underscore design um, on Instagram. Or you can find us at our website, which is one word, all caps design LLC dot com. And that's where I'm going to be posting a lot more of our recent work. Um, but yeah, my personal Instagram's attached there. I'd love to be your friend and meet you guys. Yeah. Be design buddies. But thank yeah. you, Maggie. Yeah, Thanks. thank you guys so much. Thanks See you for soon. watching today. Yeah, you know, thank you so much for being here. And then if uh, for anyone who's missing today, just feel free to come back and watch the replay on Adobe Live. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Awesome. Yeah. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.